We're sisters, best friends, and authors on a mission to help you stoke your creative fire and live the life of your dreams. We believe that purpose fuels passion and that creativity is your secret weapon for mass construction. There's never been a better time to bless the world with your dream realized. You're listening to The Kate and Abby Show. What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Kate and Abby Show. Do you wish that you could be more confident in your writing, whether that means divulging your novel's plot to a new friend or reaching out to the publishing house of your dreams? Every writer needs to have confidence and faith in their own writing. So that's what Kate and I will be talking about in today's podcast, our best advice for being confident and secure in your writing so that you can have the fabulous author life that you deserve. Okay, before we get started, we have to thank our sponsors who are you. That's right. You guys are the ones who support this show and keep it going, and we appreciate you so much. So if you get value out of this podcast, go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this show alive and free of interruptions. Okay, let's get right into it. How to be confident as a writer. I know we have, we both have a lot to say about this. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So this is a big topic. (laughs) Um, And something that helps to forge the foundations of having a happy career, a happy art as a writer. Yeah, for sure. There's so many, uh, so many aspects to writing, but one of them that you don't think you'll need is confidence. I think a lot of writers don't think they'll need it because it's like the introvert's dream job. Mm. Like you don't have to put yourself out there really like physically and talk to people and like make introductions. Usually you don't have to, unless you go to like conferences. But if you are the kind of like reclusive writer, typical reclusive writer who doesn't really like to put themselves out there a lot, then you probably don't approach writing thinking, oh, I have to be confident, you know, I have to have this confident attitude. But right. what happens is you encounter moments when you have to have confidence. So yeah. like I said in the intro, whether that's just telling your friend about your book or reaching out to a publishing house or selling your book as an indie author, that's a huge one is like, when you start to sell your book to people or like make a video about it and tell people about it and you want people to go and read it. Um, that's, that, that's a moment where a lot of authors, a lot of indie authors like hit a wall and they're like, Oh my gosh, I don't know what to say about my book. Um, (laughs) I don't know why you should read it. And it's just like comes across sounding bad because you don't have confidence. That's really the the missing element. Exactly. And sitting down to write too. Yes, and writing. Uh, you can have lack yeah. of confidence in your own work where you're like, oh, right. it's not that yeah. good. Oh, so I'm not like, a good writer. The negative yeah. voices in your head mm-hmm. take control and you have more of a negative energy uh, filtering being channeled into your work rather than confident, positive energy. And that really can influence how you write and how you work, how you view your own writing. If you're viewing your writing in a negative light, it's most likely because you have a lack of confidence in your own work, in yourself, in how in how you're writing. You have a lack of confidence in your own writing. Mm-hmm. So that can really change a, a feeling inside of you when you sit down to write, whether you are confident in your work or whether you're experiencing doubts and a lack of confidence in your own work when you sit down to write it can really change the atmosphere of your writing session Mm. yeah so there's like so many aspects to writing it's an important thing to cultivate Mm. yeah and that's the thing it's a it's a practice it's not um a one size fits all one time thing it's a constant decision that's being made every day in lots of different ways Um, it's just as easy to be confident as it is to be doubtful and down on your writing. It, it takes just as much energy to channel the confident emotion or the negative emotions of doubt. Same amount of energy. It's just, we have to pull back and be the observer of those two emotions 
and decide. And that's the hard part is becoming that observer, not being so down in the weeds that we can't see the fact that we have the opportunity to choose. We're, we're too involved in the thing to see that, you know, okay, these two choices are before me. We only see the, oh, you know, I feel this way about it. Right. You know what I mean? So to become the observer of our emotions and to realize, hey, you know what? I'm going to consciously choose to be confident in my work yeah. and confident in the fact that I have the ability to write and get better with practice. So I think a lot of people mistake confidence with, oh, well, you know, I'm not like the perfect writer. Well, nobody is. Yeah. You know, so it's not so much confident that your work is perfect because it will never be that. <laughs> so you can liberate yourself right away from having to, um, you're not being confident because of any uh, egotistical um, pie in the sky standard. Right. You're being confident in the fact that you have the ability to show up for yourself and get better each and every time. Right. And really the ego thing how I see it anyway is that's insecurity mm. like when you are prideful and egotistical about something um that's really that comes from a place of insecurity so pride and like being prideful is not the same as being confident mm. at all because pridefulness usually comes from a sense of insecurity um whereas just confidence comes from a place of security in yourself and in your achievements. And I think that's one of the practical ways that people listening can apply what you're saying is to remember your achievements. And by achievements, I don't necessarily mean the credentials you would give on, you know, some professional piece of writing for somebody to read about you. I'm talking about the small things, the things that you are personally proud of that you have either pushed through or accomplished. That could even be finishing a book, finishing a story. That takes a lot. Most people who start writing something, they never finish it. They just like neglect it and they try it out, but they don't stick with it. So just finishing something in and of itself is an accomplishment. You can even stop right now and pause this video and go and list your accomplishments that you have personally seen in your writing life. Like, what are some things that you can be confident in, that you can be proud of, that you can look back and be like, wow, I did a good job with that. Whether it's like finishing a book or writing something that you really love or even having something published or accepted by a publishing house. It doesn't have to be something like that even. It can just be something small. Anything that you can fall back on and look at this list when you are feeling not so confident and you need a boost of confidence. You need some assurance that you're going in the right direction. You're doing the right thing and you're doing a good job. You're doing your best. That to me is the most important thing that you do your best. Because yeah. if, if I always do my best, then I know then I can continue to be confident because I'm not setting myself at some standard of another person. I'm just like doing my best because that's like literally all we can do, you know, right. is your best. So knowing you did your best Make a list of the moments when you did your best and you are proud of how something turned out, either in your writing or your publishing life, and look back at that list whenever you need a boost of confidence because those are the achievements that you need to keep your mind set on and you need to cultivate, like you were saying, an attitude of positivity towards yourself, your writing, your publishing, your whole career, your whole future. What are the words that are going through your mind constantly? Are they negative or are they positive? Are you creating positive words, positive self-talk in your head? And if not, that needs to start happening now. Right. You know, exactly. That's what brings about confidence. Yes, it is. And it's our choice. All of it is our choice. We can consciously choose what energy we're going to bring to our craft. And to everything we do in life. But since we're talking about writing, let's apply it to writing. So when we sit down to write or when we sit down to edit or work on a book or whatever, we can choose what type of emotion we are channeling into that thing. We can choose what type of emotions we are feeling about that because we are the masters of our own minds. 
we are manifesting that energy into what we're creating because writing is a very, it starts very internally. So we can choose like, you know what, I'm going to look at this list like Abby was just talking about. I'm going to generate some feelings of success and happiness. What does that mean to me? What does that look like? Throw away everything you've heard up until this moment. Don't let anyone else's idea of what success should look like inhibit these these um, visions that you're creating in your mind. Let them be whatever you feel in your heart is like, mm, that is true happiness for me. Cultivate those feelings. Assume those feelings. See your book being read by your ideal reader, changing their lives. Whatever it is that makes you feel like, wow, yeah, that's what I want my story to do. And then allow that, own that energy, own that energy because it takes just as much energy to conjure these thoughts of your book failing or never finishing it and you're sad and miserable about it. You know what I mean? It's the same amount of energy goes into that as it would the alternative. So what the only thing preventing us from doing that is most of our negative thought patterns are we are happening unconsciously are slipping past our past our consciousness we don't really notice that we get into these negative thought loops we feel poorly because of them we feel drained of energy we can notice those side effects but what we need to pull back and see is the root of the problem is you know i'm into this negative thought loop and i'm going to pull back i'm going to be the observer and choose to have confidence because I am a writer because I am actively practicing my craft. I'm showing up for myself. I am getting better each and every time. And trusting yourself, trusting that ability you have and not this uh, bleak image that you can paint without even actively choosing to paint it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because your, your mind will default. to the Right, negative. your mind will default. To that, And I feel like that's a learned behavior that we have. I don't think we're born into the world with this default negative because you see kids are filled with positive energy. You know, we learn these like, oh, it'll probably end up being bad. Right. You know, everything's probably going to fall apart. You know, we learn to be disappointed before we even have a reason to be disappointed. Yeah. And you're really just basing that off of all of the failure stories you've heard. Right. Or all of the things, all the people who didn't stick it out or didn't work for them. Right. Which a lot of times comes from just a lack of perseverance. So you can't equate yourself to somebody that you don't know what their life was like. You don't know what their story was. Not story, right. like literal story. I mean, like their path, their experience, their experience, experience was completely exactly. different than yeah. yours. So, and you might be more perseverant. You might be more like willing to work hard for what you want right in which case it's like okay well then why are you looking at that person and all these other experiences right. and, and be like and oh it's probably going to be like that like no not necessarily and failure it doesn't you know failing once or twice mm. you know that yeah. oftentimes those are just we choose to call them failures but they're really the stepping stones we need to take to get to success like what pops right. into my head was um that biopic we watched a while back about like Walt Disney when he was young and just starting out, like he experienced a lot of failures before he hit on like, you know, oh, wow, here's, you know, this cartoon really takes off and then he gets a studio and yada, yada. And everyone knows this, th what, what happened with that, you know, a few people know about Disney. So, yeah. um, <laughs> okay. Would it have been better if he's like, oh, you know what? That failed. I'm not going to do that again. Because right, when you're in the moment, you don't know how the story <laughs> ends. Exactly. So, so you need to look at this is a process. This is something I'm working through and I'm just going to persevere through not being able to do it at, right now. But that doesn't mean I will never be able to do it. Yeah. Just and, because and you, you can't can, do it right this minute doesn't yeah. mean that you're not strengthening all those internal emotional muscles. You're strengthening the muscles of your craft each time you do it to eventually become your dream manifested. Right. And you learn. That's the strength that's, that you get is you learn each time. I love the quote, and I can't remember who said it. There is no failure. You either win or learn. And that's how I've looked at failure for a long time. And I think that's the only way to look at failure because 
Otherwise, you're going around life, dragging around this luggage of failure. Oh, here's all my failures. Let, let me unpack all my failures and tell you about all the times I failed. Well, those could just be learning experiences. It all depends on how you want to frame those experiences. So you either win or learn. Um, another thing that I think helps with the confidence is, and even if this is a surprise, surprise yourself by complimenting yourself and complimenting your writing. So if you're used to negative self-talk going through your brain, this might be as a, this might come as a surprise when you start compliment, complimenting yourself. But I think this is essential because it's not just about getting rid of the bad stuff. You have to invite good vibes, good words, good energy into your life, into your mind, into your space. Not just get, get rid of the bad stuff. It's sort of like starting a new diet, a healthy diet. It's not just about eliminating the bad stuff. It's about eating the good stuff. You know, exactly. so you can't just empty out the negative. You have to fill that empty space with positivity afterwards. So compliment yourself. Compliment your writing. Find things that you love about your writing or love about your book. Make another list. I love lists. <laughs> I love making lists so much for everything. But they're very helpful, especially when you are trying to remember things that you can't remember off the top of your head. So occasionally you might be like, yeah, you know, that's really cool. I really like that element of my writing or that line made me laugh or whatever. And compiling these things into a list that you can go back and later when you're not feeling so confident or you just need a little boost of encouragement and read the list and you'll be like, wow, I'm a great writer. I actually really love my writing. And even if you feel like you can improve, that's great. Like everybody should feel like they can improve, but you should be able to find happiness and confidence where you are currently still. Yeah. You know, because like I said before, you're still doing your best, exactly. which is the important part. So this also comes into play when you are an indie author and you're pitching your writing or you're writing blurbs, you're trying to sell your book, you're trying to get ARC readers, whatever is the goal, you're trying to get people to read your story. Talk about your writing, talk about your story as if it was written by your favorite author. If this was just a book that you picked up in Barnes and Noble and you read it and you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is the book I've always wanted to read. Obviously it is because you wrote it. You spent all this time and blood and tears and sweat writing this book. You obviously love it deep down. So if you picked up that book by your favorite author and you read it and you loved it, what would you have to say about it? You probably have a lot of good things to say about it. So thinking of it from another perspective, like you were saying, like detach from the, from the perspective that you've always been in and look at it from a different perspective, like from the perspective of an admirer of this book, mm. what would you have to say about it? You know, and that, like will, that. that will help so much with getting other people to read your book, but also with just gaining confidence in your own writing. Exactly, because you start to see things differently. You yeah. see, it's, it's really a matter of perspective, mm -hmm. so much of it. Um, and like I said, it, you're closer to it than anyone. And right. so you're actually pretty biased. It's hard for you to see the qualities about it that others are going to see. Right. So when you when you pull back and look at it from the point of view of an admirer or someone who's like, this is my favorite book, you're going to see the qualities of it, or at least it will invite you to see the qualities of it rather than just like the negative things that most people aren't going to notice. Um, like <laughs> you're, you're going to notice the flaws of a lot more than your average reader because you are the one who wrote it. And a lot of writers out there tend to be perfectionists, you know. Um, so the little things that you are like, oh, that's such a big problem might not be as big as you think. And I think that's where also advice, constructive mm -hmm. advice from beta readers and people you trust can actually help you to build confidence. Yes. Can help you to see that, you know, to see it from a different perspective other than your own, to know that you're not just making this all up in your head, in a right. way, in a sense. Yeah, that's a very key element 
is getting constructive criticism. Embracing constructive criticism and critiques will make you more confident in your writing because you inadvertently accept the fact that you can improve and you're not too proud to improve. And I think if you're not too prideful, egotistical, whatever the word, to improve, then you're in a great place. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, you will be on the path to become better and be open to accepting critiques. And like you said, from people who you trust and who want to see you succeed, that's the, the most important thing, qualifier. It's a defining factor. Mm -hmm. The most important qualifier for your beta readers, your very close knit group of people who give you the first initial feedback on your book and also ARC readers, but beta readers are, it's the most important to have this in your beta reader circle is to know that the person wants to see you succeed mm -hmm. and they understand the path you're on and the mission you have with your story. So once you have that, you can pretty much open yourself to accept and embrace and seriously consider that person's perspective because they're highly qualified feedback exactly. giver, you know? Yes. So um, embracing that will only make you a more confident writer. Yeah, absolutely. Because a confident person's okay with taking feedback. Right. Um, to be afraid of feedback is like the epitome of not being confident, yeah. being scared. And so you don't want to be right. like that. You want to just take a deep breath and relax. And I know it can also feel vulnerable for sure um, and scary putting stuff out there and it's precious to you and someone's going to give feedback on it and what if it kind of hurts your feelings. But, you know, don't think of it that way. You know what I mean? Like pull back from it and realize that you're actually in the process of making it better and you're giving it the love that it needs to really spread its wings. And when you look at it that way, it's not scary. Yeah. What's going to hurt your feelings more? Honest feedback from a person you trust and wants to see you succeed or a bunch of one-star reviews. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just say. Yeah, those, those will say. definitely crush your soul more. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want those. Yeah, so cultivating confidence as soon as possible is a great thing. Same with like the reading reviews thing. Not that you should go and read reviews. We have a whole podcast about that, by the way. But when you see reviews come in, the one stars and the people who don't like it won't crush you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. So that's, a, that's an important thing to have. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I start cultivating it now because yeah. <clears throat> I don't even care if you're if you're someone who's never even going to publish a book. Let's say you're just you, you want to you're watching this because you're writing an essay for school and you want to feel confident while you do it. It's going to do you a world of good to learn how to be confident in what you're doing, to own your craft, to own what you're working on and be like, you know what, instead of channeling negative, doubtful energy into this, I'm going to imagine in my mind this picture of me doing this really well. And beyond that, it's sparking joy into my life. And I'm going to channel that energy into what I'm writing right now. That will do nothing but become a very good beneficial practice that will have good impacts on your life. Mm. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's great advice. And also I think might be helpful is like vision boards, mm. even for something as niche as this. Like I have a vision, I make a vision board every year for my um, upcoming year with like some visual inspiration of what I want the year to include. And a lot of times just creating this image, this vision of what I want my writing life and my life in general to look like creates, it sharpens the image, I guess, for me. Um, and gives me something to imagine and visualize. And that helps me, helps me personally with like the visualizing and creating that image and then moving towards that. 
like with with intention. Yeah. That being your intention, I yeah. guess. So I'm a very visual person, so that helps me. So that can be fun too. Just don't get too lost on Pinterest. Yeah, I think it's good to have <laughs> visuals for sure. Anything that's going to spark, anything that's going to get it going, it, it like primes the well, you know what I mean? It gets your mind focusing on something. It's the same as like a mantra. Yeah. Find your mantras, find the mantras in your life, things that are going to start your mind working in a creative positive direction a direction that's that's going to lead you to positive good energy yeah the thing about confidence is nobody can give it to you like it's something that you have to cultivate yourself and it's not something you can get from five star reviews or really great feedback from your beta readers or the best publishing deal ever none of those things will give you the confidence you need. The confidence you need can only come from inside of you. And like everything that we just talked about is very helpful to move towards cultivating that confidence. But the thing I always try to remember is that even when I get great feedback and it's really um, encouraging, I have to make sure that I don't give other people the power to make me feel good so that I'm depending on that. Because if you give other people the power to make you feel good, you also give them the power to make you feel sad, right? So if they give you a bad review or bad feedback, now you've given them the power to change, literally change your mood and how you feel about your life and your writing. So it's good to receive cr constructive criticism and take it with a grain of salt. And it's also good to receive positive feedback and to appreciate that person for giving them, for giving you the positive feedback and to enjoy it. And have experience all the good feelings that comes with that, but don't give them the power to make you feel good or make you feel bad because that is power that you should keep for yourself. And with that power, you can cultivate an attitude of confidence where you are literally unstoppable and bulletproof. Mm, I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. So I like to close off our podcast each time with a quote. And I don't know where this quote came from, so I don't know the source, but I liked it. Confidence isn't walking into a room and thinking you are better than everyone. It's walking in and not having to compare yourself at all. Mm, and boom. that is very true. So boom, that's it. If you enjoyed this episode of The Kate and Abby Show, share it with a friend and leave us a nice rating. We always appreciate that. Again, thank you to our patrons. You guys are awesome. You keep this show going. So if you get value out of the Kate and Abby show, you know what to do. Go to patreon.com slash the Kate and Abby show and help us keep this show alive and free of interruptions. Also, be sure to check out the um, video version of this podcast if you haven't seen that already. You can find that on Kate's YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash K.A. Emmons. She has an audiobook coming out soon, so that's very exciting. And you can also find some amazing writing resources on my channel, which is youtube.com slash Abby Emmons. So check out all of that. And until next time, stay stoked and rock on.